Hey friends, Becca here. Today we're taking a gander at the new pen and paper RPG, Desperados. Based on the hit video game series and its upcoming installment, Desperados 3. Color me excited. <laughs> This brand new western RPG, based on the tactical stealth game Desperados 3, pits a posse of players along with a game master against the roughnecks and renegades of the 19th century American West. Character creation begins with the selection of background. This is an open-ended option, defining the character's origin, what they do for a living, and how they spend their leisure time. Next, to find the character's attributes. There are a total of six attributes in the game, each ranging in value from one to six. Brawn, raw strength and athleticism. Agility, speed and balance. Metal, vitality and toughness. This also determines hit points. Insight, this is your perception and judgment. Wits, which determines knowledge and wisdom. And resolve, a character's willpower and force of personality. Each character begins with 20 attribute points to distribute amongst these six types, and no attribute can exceed a value of six. And a six in an attribute means this character is amongst the best in the world in that ability, like legendary. Like me, with a reading a teleprompter. Next, players select a template. Templates are similar to classes or professions in other RPGs. They define the character's role not only in the party, but also in the world of the Wild West. Each template includes attribute modifiers, raising two attribute values, neither of which can exceed six, two standard skills from a general skill list, and two special skills unique to the character's template. The common templates of the game include Gunslinger, Skilled horse riders and firearm experts, these characters gain a special distraction skill and the ability to fight with dual pistols. Choo choo! Gamblers, these are the crafty and insightful professional gamblers. They gain a beguiling skill and the ability to disguise themselves from enemies and allies alike. Hmm. Trappers, the rugged outdoors people of the West. Now using their survival skills and knowledge in nature, they can distract and plant bear traps, but for humans. So human traps, not for bears. Montebanks, the clever and conniving bunch. These travelers have an expertise for science and medicine, using gases and potions to incapacitate enemies or bandages to heal wounds or pretend to heal wounds. And voodoo priests, the only supernatural element of the game. These practitioners of the mystic arts gain spells, allowing them to summon spirits and heal the sick. After a player has selected their character's attributes and templates, they adjust their scores and write in their skills. They then use their modified scores to apply values to the following fields. Hit points, the main health indicator of the game. A character's hit point total is equal to their metal score. Dueling score, a character's ability to dodge gunfire in a duel. This value is equal to 10 plus their agility score. Strength of nerve, the character's reaction to stressful situations. This can modify dice rolls in game. The value is equal to the character's resolve score. Next, players select two additional skills from the skill list. These reflect the character's training and experience from their background. In addition to the skills from their template, these abilities define the best talents of a character. Skills provide characters with opportunities to accomplish tasks and feats otherwise impossible for more mundane mudsuckers. Once a player has selected all this information, they can work with their GM to determine starting equipment, which may be based on the campaign they want to run. The gameplay system for Desperados is simple, sleek, and skill-based. Whenever a test is required in the story, the Game Master will ask the player to roll three d6s. Based on the difficulty of the task, they'll also provide a target number. The player will roll the dice, adding the results to any applicable skills or attribute scores, equipment bonuses, or other game effects. If the total exceeds or equals the difficulty number set by the GM, the character succeeds. If not, they fail. 
The GM and the story provide the result of either outcome. Some roles can result in a grand success, providing a better than expected outcome from the task. If a player succeeds on their role and has at least two dice with matching values, they achieve a grand success, granting an additional advantage. If this occurs in combat, players can access the Grand Success in Combat table, unlocking some truly heroic actions. GM set difficulty based on this handy graph. Simple and routine tasks have lower target numbers between 8 and 13, while difficult or challenging tasks may be as high as 22, or in the case of test team scary, a difficulty number beyond even 23. Yeah. Players also have a few tricks up their sleeves to modify roles. In addition to their equipment and skills, characters may use their strength of nerve value as a pool of points used to re-roll dice. For each point they spend, reducing their strength of nerve score, a character can re-roll one die from their test. This pool refreshes as a character has a chance to rest, determined by the GM. Character progression uses a milestone system, determined by the GM as well. Once the characters have completed a chapter of the overall campaign, they receive two benefits. They increase one attribute value by one point, never exceeding six, and they learn a new skill from the skill list. Voodoo priests can learn a new spell as well. And no Western RPG would be complete without some combat rules. Like the video game, Desperados uses lots of tactic-based fighting, but still keeps the rules simple and swift in order to keep the gameplay moving. There are two types of combat, tactical combat and duels. Tactical combat is the most common form of fighting and handles multiple combatants on both or all sides. After describing the scenery, terrain, and position of the fighters, the GM allows characters to take action based on their field of vision. That is what they can see. This is determined based on a character's positioning on the battlefield. Cover obstructs vision, for example. However, characters must emerge from cover to attack opponents. Using their special skills and clever role-playing, characters can alter opponents' field of vision, gaining the upper hand in combat. Players then resolve their actions, rolling applicable skills for their action choice. Firing the revolver would use range combat, sneaking round back would use conceal, etc. If a character fails the roll, they not only fail the task, their opponents within line of sight may now attack them. This is the enemy portion of combat and occurs whenever a character fails a roll. Any time a character passes through an opponent's field of vision without taking a combat action, they impose an automatic failure, giving opponents a chance to deal damage. Just like life. Just don't go running through the battlefield. If the player succeeds, they pass their test and either cause damage or accomplish their action. Grand successes grant a bonus from the Grand Success in Combat table. When damaging opponents, weapons deal one point of damage. Many henchmen have just one hit point, and bosses or major opponents can have multiple hit points. If a character ever drops to zero hit points, they're incapacitated. What this means is up to the GM, crawling on the floor, unconscious, or even dead. Duels are a special form of combat evoking the quick draw showdowns of many a Western classic. Duels are intended to emulate the tension and excitement of a showdown. They follow a four-step process. One, determine the difficulty number set by the GM based on the ruthlessness of the opponent. The player's target number is the difficulty level of the opponent, while the opponent's target is the character's dueling score. Hmm. Two, determine shot timing. Each duelist sets a D6 showing the number of rounds they want to wait before shooting. For each round waiting, they lower the difficulty number by one. Three, exchange shots. Whoever waited the least amount fires first and rolls their test. Failures here do not impose an attack by the opponent. A success means a hit and one damage. Four, end the duel. Opponents can either consider the disagreement settled or restart a new round of firing. 
In addition to all these gameplay mechanics, the core book contains many helpful resources for GMs and players alike, including a full grimoire of spells for voodoo priests, equipment lists providing options for augmenting skills, party ideas including Pinkerton detectives or bounty hunters, inspiration for adversaries including devious railroad tycoons and ruthless cattle barons, and an introductory adventure, Desperados Don't Forgive, featuring several chapters of robber fighting, whiskey drinking, and deadly dueling. And that's Desperados. I'm Becca Scott, and thank you so much for checking out this video from Good Time Society. You can also check out our other How to Game videos. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. See you around, partner.